some of the passages that he references here, because he says the first claim, he says, Scriptures teach that the gospel calls sinners to faith, join in oneness with repentance. He lists, and we're not going to go through all of these, because he's basically, and you could list a lot more than this, verses that just talk about repentance, right? So he brings up Acts 2.38, right? So what shall we do? Repent and believe, that, you know, repent and be baptized, every one of your name in the Holy Ghost, right? So you can, you, can, you can look at verses that say repent. And you can look at verses that talk about repentance in context of salvation as well. He has Acts 17, verse 30, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay, he commands everyone to repent. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem comes in when he starts making the definition of repentance be something that it's not. So I'm not going to go through these other verses. Well, since we're in Acts, he has Acts 20, verse 21, uh, which says, testifying both to the Jews and also the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, okay, amen, repentance toward God, faith. Great. I don't have a, pro I don't have a problem with these verses. There's nothing wrong. So when he says... It calls sinners to faith, join in oneness with repentance. Yeah, because the reason why it's joined in oneness, very simply, because in order to believe on Jesus, you have to change what you believe prior to believing on Jesus. So yeah, it's in oneness with repentance because you're changing your mind. I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I believed. I believed in no God. I believed in a different God. I believed in my works. I believed in myself. I believe in something else. Now I'm believing in Jesus. That's a repentance. That's a change. So sure, when you believe it's tied in one, with, that's fine. And you can list all the verses in the world you want of faith and, and repent tied together. No problem there. But here's where he, he references repentance is a turning from sin. He has Acts 3.19 and Luke 24.47. You can turn to these if you want. I have them all just written out in my notes. I kind of want to get through this. There's a lot of material to get through. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be pretty quick with this. He has Acts 3.19, Luke 24.47. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Here's a statement. Repentance is a turning from sin. Parentheses, Acts 3.19. So is sin mentioned in that verse, Acts 3.19? Yeah, it is. But... Is he saying, he says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Amen. So in order for, your, for you to be saved from your sins, in order for you to you know, have those sins wiped away and washed away and cleared out, you need to repent. Does that say that repentance, it, re repentance is turning from sin? No, it doesn't say that anywhere. The verse does not back up his claim at all. It's, it's zero proof for saying it's turning from sin. Yet he lists it here just because the word repent is there and the word sin is there. So people go, oh, okay, repent, sin, whatever. But that's not what it's saying at all. And then the other verse, Luke 24, and some of these I'm going to add in context because, you know, it's kind of important to get context when you read the Bible. He has Luke 24, 47. I'm going to start reading in verse number 46. Uh, where the Bible reads, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. It's basically saying the same thing Acts 3.19 said. Repentance is preached, and remission, what does that mean? When your sins are remitted, they're paid for. Where is it saying we have to start following the law and turn from our sins? In fact, that's why I start in verse 46, because verse 46 says that people of Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. He's bringing up the gospel, the gospel that doesn't say follow the law, turn from all your sins. The gospel that says Jesus Christ died and was and is risen. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That's what you need to repent and believe that. Trust that, not your works. It has nothing to do with turning from sin because once you put your faith in Christ, your sins are remitted. You are saved. It's that simple.